and here's your special surprise. We are having live chapel here at our virtual learning center this week with our students who are here today on a holiday. So most kids are home from school today, but they are here and we're still going to learn tons of stuff. And just in case you're wondering, my sweet friends, Miss Linda and Mr. Ken and Miss Ann and Miss Leanne, who are here this morning, have me wearing all this lovely getup because tomorrow is my birthday and they just would not let that pass without us, you know, recognizing that. So um, I hope our internet is going to hold strong for us so that we can have our chapel lesson here today. All right, so let's get started with our pledges. Michael, will you come hold the American flag for us? Everybody standing, please. Stand up. Ready? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job, Michael. Thank you. All right. Y'all can stay standing because you're going to stand back up for two more plays. I don't know that one. I just sat down so I could preach the flags. I don't know my that arms one. are really short. Okay. So, let's see. Helena, come on. Attention. Now, let's let's be reminded, when we say our pledges, do we slouch? No. Do we play with our hair? No. Do we pick our nose? No. Never, because that's gross. All right, so nice and tall. Let me see your shoulders back, nice and tall. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Good job, Helena. Thank you. All right. And now let's see who. If you don't, don't sit down. We still have pledges. What are y'all doing? I know that. All right. Let's see here. Adrian, would you like to come and hold the Bible for me? You ready? Attention. Good job. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. Good job. Thanks, Adrian. Now we're going to sing the B I B L E. Y'all know this, right? Yes. Yeah, you know this one? I can't remember. I can't remember. Oh, let's see. We have people commenting. Hey, Juliana and Colleen. Hey, Miss Motti. We're so glad you guys are with us this morning. All right, so everybody looking at me. Here we go. You ready? The, come on, the, come on, don't shine. The B I P L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand up. Jesus fingers. Here we go. Where are your Jesus fingers? 
Yeah, so whew, we'll see what 50 brings the following year. Thanks, Miss Linda. Yes, Miss Linda reminded me. Of what, baby? Oh, well, we'll have to see. We'll have to talk about all that later. Now, let's see. So we did our calendar. We did the, oh, let's see the days of the week song. Do you know the days of the week song? Yeah. Okay. I did. Days of the week. 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 because they've not been feeling the best, and Miss Melissa's dad passed away, so they've got to travel on Friday. So we need to pray for them to feel better so they can go on their trip, okay? And then, um, anybody else? Am I missing something? My brother Rick. Yes, Mr. Rick. Mr. Rick, that's Mr. Ken's brother. He's having some heart issues, so we're going to pray for him. Mr. Ken's brother. <laughs> he does have a brother. How about that? Brother. All right, so get your hands up. You ready? One little, two little, three little fingers. Four little, five little, six little fingers. Seven little, eight little, nine little fingers. Ten little fingers folded in prayer. Now bow your heads. Bow your heads and close your eyes. And let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Lord, thank you so much for that sun that is shining down on us that reminds us that you are the mighty creator that created this world for us to live in. Father God, today I want to lift up Mr. Rick. Lord, we just pray for him, for his heart to be healed and, and for his pain to be lessened and for answers from doctors, Lord, to give him comfort soon. And Father, today um, I also want to lift up Miss Tina. Um, as she's going for some for some procedures and tests. Lord, I pray for Mr. Wade, Lord, for his eyes. And Lord, um, today I want to pray for, for uh, Melissa and Juliana and Colleen and Mr. Walt. Lord, they've not been feeling well, so Lord, we just pray for healing for them. And we pray um, for their travel that's coming up. Lord, I also want to pray for Mason and Miller, our friends here at the Virtual Learning Center, um, as they are traveling. And they've had two deaths in their family recently. And so Lord, I just pray for healing for them. I pray for um, their family as they're grieving the loss of loved ones. And Lord, just bring them back safe to us soon. Lord, I also want to pray for Pastor Brad as he is still not feeling well. Lord, I pray for him and his family, um, for them, for Lisa and Faith to stay well and for, uh, for Brad to be able to, to be better soon, Lord. Lord, I thank you for our friend Becky who's caring for him and, and the nurses there and and Lord, I just thank you for all of those who provide such good health care for us around here. And Lord, pray, I pray today for our doctors, our nurses. Lord, I pray for our military who protects us every single day. Many who are deployed right now, Lord, away from their families. Lord, I pray for them. And Lord, I pray for all the mamas and daddies that are at work today. And Lord, I just pray that we can all be home together tonight, um, safe and making you first. Lord, I pray that families are intentional to put you first and Lord if they haven't been that they will change their ways and that they will make you first in their daily life. Lord I ask your blessing upon this chapel time. Lord I thank you that we can be live in our in our classroom and our learning center today and with our friends virtually um, streaming and so Lord I just thank you for how you provide a way for us always. So Lord be with us today help our wiggles be calm and help our ears and our hearts to be open to receive your word. It's in the precious name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
All right. So now, all my friends that are here with me, you're already sitting. I would like for you to sit crisscross applesauce. Crisscross applesauce. Thank you. Crisscross applesauce. Thank you. And I want your hands in your lap. And I want your lips quiet. And I want your ears turned on wide and loud. Because I want you to hear this Bible story for today. Now, my sweet friend here, Lanny, she's she's pretty pretty sweet friend. I love her real big. She's done a lot of chapel times with me, haven't you? Yeah. And, wait, what? They were? What? Are you kidding me right now? Well, that's pretty special. Can I tell the boys and girls about it? Wow. Okay, thanks. She's really sweet. Do you know what she told me? Do you want to know what she told me? Mm -hmm. Are you sure you want to know? Yeah. She told me that some of her family, some of her ancestors, traveled with the Israelites out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. And so, and so, have they told you stories about that? Yeah. And they passed it down through family, through the family stories. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, we're going to talk about that today. Thank you for being with us today. And thanks for sharing that special news that you have. That's pretty special. Yeah. You know what's really cool? Is we're all descendants of Adam and Eve, which were the first man and woman. Y'all know that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All families came from them because they were the first. Pretty cool. Yeah. And you know, your ancestors lived in the garden, right? Yeah, that's right. And then through time, more and more sheep were born and more and more people were born and families were grown and that's how we all got here, right? By the grace of God? Yeah, right. That is for sure. Okay, so can you have a seat while we do our story? Okay. Tell the boys and girls bye. Bye. Oh, you're sweet little lady. I love you. I love Lenny. She used to sing, but she gave up her singing career a few years ago. Her voice got a little old and she couldn't she couldn't sing anymore. It's okay. Now Last week, who remembers? Somebody, Michael, I think you said it already. And Juliana and Colleen. Um, what now? Yes, we talked about the golden calf. Now, hold on. My old eyes won't let me see. And somebody has typed us a message. Oh, it's Peepaw. Hey, Peepaw, we're so glad that you're with us in chapel this morning. Now, that's Mr. Jimmy that's been here with y'all this week. Or last week. All right, so last week we talked about the golden calf. Now, let's review for just a second. So the golden calf, how, what, where did that come from? Michael. Um, um, I think it's Moses' brother. Yes. And uh, he, create, he, um, everybody, he told everybody to give them their golden belongings and he built a golden, golden calf. Yep, you're exactly right. That is what he did. But now tell me this, guys. Good job, Michael. You were really listening last week, and I appreciate that. Who can tell me why they wanted Aaron to build something? Cameron. Because Moses, because Moses was on the hill talking to God through the burning bush, and, that, and he was up there for a long time, and then they wanted, and they thought that something happened to him, so they went to tell that the that Moses' brother that, that they want a God that they can see. That's exactly right. Give me some, brother. You are getting smarties after chapel time. Yes, you are. Good job. Both of you are. Great job. Cameron, thank you for listening so well last week. Good job. So, here were the Israelites. As Cameron said, Moses had gone up the mountain. Does anybody remember what the name of that mountain was? Um, Do you remember? Sinai. Sinai? Yeah, that's good. That's good for you all of that. Yes, so he had gone up on that mountain, and he was talking to God, and he was gone for so long that the Israelites, now we have learned that the Israelites are quite impatient, right? These Israelites that Moses led out of Egypt, they got hungry. What did they start doing? Oh, we're so hungry. We should stay in Egypt. We're going to starve back in the wilderness. And what did God do? What fell from the sky? Bread. Bread. I mean, you see bread falling right from the sky. And then they said, oh, we're so thirsty, Moses. You should have left us in Egypt. We're going to thirst to death. 
And what did God do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's very good. He made water come right out of the side of the mountain. That's exactly right. Well, he, he had Moses go, remember? He told him exactly what to do with his staff and when to hit it. And, and so the water come <laughs> flowing out, and they had water. So God has provided every single thing they needed. But oh, they were so impatient. And so now Moses has gone up to talk to God, like God, the one and only true God. One and only. Yeah. And so he's up there, and they're like, oh, it's taking him so long. Maybe something happened. We need a God we can see. We need a God that we can see, like all those people in Egypt have. But now listen. Oh, no. And they were not real gods, were they? They made a fake God. So now listen. Oh. Yeah, it was. It was one of the Ten Commandments. Don't worship idols. Don't make fake gods. There's only one true God. Worship the only and so, so they said to Aaron, we need it. We need, we need a God we can, we can see. So he said, bring me all your jewelry. Bring me all your gold. And so he formed it into this golden calf. Now, do you remember the history behind that that I told you? Yes, Adrian. So, is it like we're being unpatient and then, then Aaron got all the gold and then he built the calf mm-hmm. and then they were worth and then the Israelites were worshiping the golden calf, and then when Moses saw it, he was angry and burned it up. He did. Mm-hmm. He was so angry. And but now listen, hold on. Why did he make it a calf, a golden calf? Do you remember? Yeah. You don't remember? Yeah. Do you remember? Why? Because because they wanted a god. It, right? But he built a statue like he could have made anything, right? Like, why a cow? I'm going to tell you. Because when they were in Egypt, right, when they were slaves in Egypt, it was very common practice for the statues that they worshipped to be the shape of the golden calf. Okay? So that's what they knew. That's what they were familiar with in worshipping fake gods, because that's what the Egyptians had done. And so that's why Aaron chose to make this golden calf, because they would relate to that. Now, when Moses came back down, as Adrian told us, he saw this calf, and he got so mad, he had something in his hands. What did he, what did he slam? The tablet. The, 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 the tablet. Yeah. 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 Good job, buddy. The they broke. Broke. And then they broke. They did. They shattered, didn't they? And so, what did he do? Somebody already said, I think Michael said, what did he do with the golden calf? What did he do, Cam? He burned it, and then he put... And then he put the ashes in the water, maybe the Israelites like, couldn't drink it. Yes, yeah, that's a good job. Well, y'all are so smart. I am so proud of y'all. So he did. He made them drink it. That might have been terrible, right? But anyway, so that's what he made them do as one of their consequences. Because are there consequences for actions? Always. There's always consequences for actions. That's right, Lord. So... So today, what we're going to talk about now, and then Moses went back up the mountain and God gave him another, another tablet, right, with the Ten Commandments on it. Comes down. And today, what we're going to talk about comes to the book of Exodus. We're still in the book of Exodus. Where is Exodus in the Bible? Is it the New Testament or the Old Testament? New mm-hmm. Old. Oh, that's right. Genesis, Exodus. Oh, we should have sung the Bible. What a Bob today. Woo-hoo. We might sing it later this afternoon in our Bible time. Um, so Exodus is the second book in the Old Testament. Okay, this comes from this. What I'm going to read you today is a summary from chapters 25, 35, and 36. Okay, the title of today's lesson is Building God's House. Mm. So let's listen now. Before I start reading, let's look at our felt board here. We got to put some people up here because remember who were all these people? Israelites. The Israelites. That's right. So let's put them all up here on our board. They're all standing around. Now, who's in this cloud right here talking to them? Who's leading them through the cloud? God. That's right. That's exactly right. Okay. So we're going to put all our little people up here. We're all little. Oh, look. I even have some children. Yeah. They're going to stand along here with their folks. And what we're going to talk about is God is going to give them instructions for this right here. Oh, what a special, special time. Yep. And this is going to be important. Mm-hmm. 
Right. That child looks so excited. Moses, where are you at? Let's get Moses up in here. The child looks like it's about to get some gold. It does. He's looking at that gold saying, Woo, that's pretty. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so let's turn on our listeners and see what it says here. It says, Can you imagine making a house beautiful enough for God to live in? Yeah. I want the people of Israel to make me a sacred house where I can live among them, God said. I wonder what kind of house God wants, thought Moses. But he didn't need to worry because God had a plan and he shared it with Moses. Tell the people of Israel that anyone who wants, who wants to may bring me offerings and I will give you a list of things needed. Moses told the people what God said and he said, we are here to help build a place for God, said one man and then it must be the finest house ever built, said another. I mean, it's got to be awesome because it's going to be God's house, right? Let's see. Another person said, um, I'm willing to give anything I have of value. Moses read the list of materials needed. I have gold and silver to give, said a very rich man. And I have some bronze, too, that can be used. Several women listened to Moses as he read the list. I've been saving some purple curtains made from goat's hair, said one woman, but I will gladly give it for curtains in God's house. Many curtains will be needed for the inside of the house. I'm skilled in sewing. I'll share my blue linen, said another woman. I also have some scarlet linen that can be used. Maybe I'll have the chance to embroider some angels on the cloth. That's exciting. That's a great gift to have, being able to embroider. Can you imagine how they embroider? Do y'all know what embroidering is? No. You know how people, see Kim's shirt right here? That's embroidered. Those oh, symbols and those, yeah. Well, today, we used to, what did you say? I see someone did that. Oh, with a machine, right? Yeah. Do you think they had a machine? Yeah. Mm. So how did they do it as Israelites? So? They said it with their hands, didn't they? Wow, so she was willing to do that. Let's see. Um, Moses heard the women talking, and he said, I am glad that you are willing to share, but we must wait for God to tell us how to use our offerings. Wait, trust, obey. But those are three words that are so important in our daily life. It's our motto for our chapel time. Wait, trust, obey. Because if we wait on God to tell us what to do, wait on his timing because it's perfect. And we trust that he is the truth and he's telling us exactly what we need to do and he has a plan. And then we obey what he says. It just makes things so much better for us. So that's what he told them. we got to wait. we got to wait for God to tell us. So after Moses told the people what was needed, the women hurried home and they brought their earrings and their bracelets and their gold rings and they gave them to Moses. Men and women came to give because they wanted to please God. I will spin goat's hair into cloth, said a woman skilled in spinning. Some of the leaders brought onyx stones to be used for the ephod and the chest piece. Others brought oil with lamp, uh, oil for lamps and anointing oil with sweet incense. Several men gladly offered acacia wood that would be needed for furniture. Moses told the people, God has appointed... All right, so here's some of those names that I'm probably not going to say exactly right because, you know, they had some really interesting names back then. Bezalel, as general superintendent, um, he is very neat. His skill is very needed, and he and a helper can act as jewelers, carpenters, and embroidery designers. Moses gave Bezalel and his helpers the materials donated by the people. Finally, the men said, we have more than enough materials. Tell the people to stop giving. Boy, they were so gracious. Look at how gracious they were to give their things. Wasn't that so kind? Yeah. Praise the Lord, said Moses, pleased that the people were so generous and so eager to give what God had asked for. The people were not only eager to give the wealth that the Egyptians had given them, they were also challenged to put much effort and time in weaving cloth and spinning thread. It took the efforts of many to make this project successful and to build God's special house. Now, did you hear what I said about thread? Where are they going to get the thread from? Deep there. 
Where? Sheep's hair. Or, or goat's hair. Yeah, they probably use some sheep's hair too. They had to weave their thread. Have you ever woven thread before? No. I have not ever woven thread. Miss Linda, have you ever woven thread? Miss Linda? Hi. Miss Linda? Mr. Ken? Not hardly. Not hardly. <laughs> I mean, I just don't even know how you begin to take that fine. Have you ever seen a goat's hair? Yes. Yes. It's not very thick, is it? Yes. And it's little teeny short pieces. And you got to weave them together to make thread. Can you even imagine the work? that they put into making God's special house. Even the thread had to be woven before they could sew with it. I mean, they were starting from scratch, using the resources that they had to honor God. Now, let me ask you this. Should we use our resources to honor God? Yes. We should. Everything that we have, we should use to honor God, really. And if we're using the things that we have to do things that are not honoring to God, well, what does that become? What? When um, we do something that's not honoring to God, what's it called? It's called obeying. No, the opposite of that. Sin. Sin, that's right. Because everything that we have ultimately comes from who? Who has blessed us with it? God. So we should use it all to honor Him in everything that we do. But you know, there's oftentimes people who um, they use their, their things for bad choices, right? So that's where that obey, good job, that's where that obey comes in. Wait, trust, <laughs> obey, right? We got to obey. Because if we're not obeying, we are well, sinning. sinning. And is sin pleasing to God? No. Not at all. Right, Juliana? Right, Colleen? Right, Alex? Are you out there listening? I know you are. So, you can't hide from me. listen. What? You can't hide <laughs> and we can't hide from God, can we? Yep. You brought up a good point. Sometimes we think when we make bad choices with the things that God has blessed us with, we think, oh, Nobody sees me. But who is always watching? God. 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 We can't hide from God, can we? No. 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 Who can so we we all on the table and like, nope, God can't see me. Well, but he can, can he? Yeah. He sure can. So that's, that's it. So let's be mindful of that. And let's use all the things that God has blessed us with to honor him. We want to honor him in all that we do. And you know, that means... Loving our brothers and our sisters, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that means obeying the adults that love us and lead us. Yes. What about that Ten Commandment? Obey your... Parents. Obey your parents. Love your spouse. Mm -hmm. Love your spouse. And nobody else the way you love your spouse, right? That's, That's right. Cheating. That would be cheating. And that is a sin, isn't it? Yeah. Give me some. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. All right. Good job, guys. Well, that is our Bible story for today. Uh, do you know those stuff? Oh, I'm so glad you're so curious because that is going to be our lesson later. We're going to talk about all the things that God asked them to put. Oh, that's the house. Yeah. And that we're going to study all about that. In fact, I have a small model one in my office that we're going to use for chapel to read. Well, not today, but if you'll watch the chapels live, you'll see it in the next few. Okay, because that's what we're going to, now that we know what God wants them to do, we're going to build it. Or we're going to, well, we're not going to build it, we're going to talk about them building it, right? <laughs> right. Okay, so, thank you guys for being with us today. Listen, I am going to be praying a special blessing over you all tomorrow that are going back to school in person, okay? My sweet children at home, I pray for you all all the time. It's important to pray for each other, right? I want you guys to pray for me, and I'll pray for y'all. Because, because I love you. Why? Because I love you. Oh. 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 All right. Listen, I am so thankful that we're able to be here together in person today and online today. I love you guys. And here's another exciting thing I want to tell you about. Everybody look at me. Look at me. 
Everybody look at me. So, today, I'm going to be launching a very special website, okay? It's called From Miss Kim. And that website is linked to our church website, but that website is going to be where all of these videos are posted. Because what I want to do is I want to provide a place where parents can allow you to go that's safe, mm -hmm. that you're not wandering around on YouTube, and you're not wandering around on Facebook. So we'll stream live on Facebook, but then all these chapels will be posted on that website so that you have a place that has material and information that is safe for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So be looking for that. I'm going to post that in comments later today. Also, on that website, there's going to be parent resources. There's going to be teenager resources. There's going to be all kinds of stuff for you all because I love you so much. So hats off to Miss Trish Brandt for helping me put that together. Um, it, it's really turned out pretty cool. I can't wait for you guys to see it. So I'll be sharing that today. Today's the big day. Miss um, Trish. Trish is a friend of mine who has helped me to do that for you all. She, she's gifted. You know how we talked about the Israelites using their gifts to build his house? Yeah. Well, Miss Trish is gifted to build websites and do social media stuff, and she's helped me with that. So I'm very thankful for her help in that because we're doing all of that to honor God so that you all can grow and your families can grow closer to him. Okay? All right. I love you guys. See you guys later. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Tell them bye. <laughs>